had nobody been doing no surgery, so she was ready to chop chop. How can you look at a woman and tell a woman, and you're a female yourself, to take out her uterus? Take me back to Georgia, back to Atlanta. Honey, I'm Good morning. How you guys are doing? I hope you're having yourself a wonderful day. It's before a year of me having my life-changing surgery. I really never told anyone when I was going to get the surgery or on YouTube, I never mentioned it on YouTube. But yes, I did have a surgery that changed my life in many ways. I have many videos on it, but I was not ready to share it with the world yet. So now I'm going to be sharing that journey because I know it can help someone. I know it can help someone, so I am definitely about helping. So I'm going to, as after this clip, then you'll start to see those videos with me in the hospital April 25th 2023 today is April 24th so today is one day before that one year mark so it's one day before my anniversary of my surgery so now I'm going to be sharing those videos with you guys here talking to you in live and living color so I got through it and if I can get through it you can too so if you're suffering from any of those issues that I mentioned in the video and probably should I probably should go into detail a little bit more so before I go further I I did not tell you what kind of surgery I had so I had a myomectomy laparotomy myomectomy laparotomy meaning I had an open myomectomy what a myomectomy is it is the removal of fibroids from the uterus going into the surgery I was told I had about five or six fibroids you gonna have to watch this video to see how many of those life-sucking things came out of my body I have a picture but anywho it all started with me experiencing like really really painful um, cycles my cycles would be super painful super heavy like I would not want to go to work for the first three days like first three days I was not about going to work. I did not want to even leave my bedroom. I used to put blankets on my bed. At one point, I was wearing diapers on top of a very large, um, a very large napkin. TMI, guys, if you're not about TMI, it's not your video this week. So I was wearing tampons a large pad and mind you this was being changed every 30 minutes I want to say 30 minutes because it to get to work at that time it took me 30 minutes and I would go to the bathroom just before I go into my car and by the time I get to work before I could sign in I had to dash to the restroom again so it was bad it was bad and it was lasting up to 10 days, some some days, up to 10 days. So, yeah, it was bad. It was really, 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 really bad. Another thing that was happening, you know, no, another thing that I thought, because people would say, where I'm from, they say, listen, if you have a baby, this issue will go away. Well, I had a baby. I had a baby. <laughs> the issue got worse. It got worse. So, 
for me, I don't know for anybody else, but for me, it did not work. That little analogy did not work at all. I don't know where that came from, but it doesn't work for me. So I decided to approach um, a doctor who, to you know, I wanted to talk about looking at my fibroids, seeing where they're placed, and maybe, you know, giving me some idea of, like, I was 32. Giving me some idea of, will I ever be able to have another another child? So basically, I went to her. I did, I did the ultrasound. I did a, yeah, a, a scan, ultrasound. And the doctor basically told me, I'm telling you, I made a video that day and I, 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 I deleted it because... I just could not believe that a female, a female provider who is a surgeon could be so insensitive. This woman, yes, it might have not been what I wanted to hear, but sometimes as providers and nurses, we have to know how to have that, um, how to communicate with our patients communicate in a way that the patient will understand what you're saying but at least do it empathetically like this woman this woman told me that I should just take my uterus out take out my uterus because um, a baby at this point will not it won't happen and um even if she does the surgery i i could end up getting a, a hysterectomy because if anything happens she's not gonna wake me up to ask me if i want to do a hysterectomy so i have to sign papers to say just in case anything happened then um she would do a hysterectomy and I'm just sitting there because I was so confused. Like, I felt like this one was, was just insensitive. Doctor, Sun River Health, surgeon, you know yourself. Because, and how I know she knows, but th this, this is what I think happened. It was during COVID. It was dry season. We just coming out of the dry season. Had nobody been doing no surgery. So she was ready to chop chop to make that money. How can you look at a woman and tell a woman, and you're a female yourself, to take out her uterus? You tell a woman of childbearing age to take out her uterus. Anyways, I was really, I was really taken aback, and I did not go back to her for eight months. So I had, it came to the point where I had to do an endometrial swab or something like a endometrial test or whatever um you know like it's, it wasn't a it wasn't a pap smear it was the other one i think it's the endometrial swap anyways whatever it was so i made an appointment went there the first question she asked me was there something that was there something at the at the last appointment was there something that she said that you know got me that caused me not to come back I said there were many things that were said at the appointment that made me not come back for eight months and you know I discussed a few things with her and um but I think at this point she knew that I was not gonna even allow her to do that surgery on me so um, you know, I said, I'm gonna, cause even at that point I was like, I'm still having the issues. I need to get something done. So I went back for the scan, the cervical scan or whatever it was. Um, you know how God works. This woman nicked my cervix, nicked my cervix. All she was doing was this one test. And she nicked my cervix. 
that was my answer. You will never, never do a procedure for me again. And never. So fast forward to the following year. I saw a sign talk about a fertility fertility specialist that does, that specializes in these types of surgery. But in my head, I, this was my thought process. I said, if this guy is a fertility specialist, he specializes in getting women pregnant, this is the person who I need because he is going to preserve my uterus at all costs. He is going to preserve my uterus. So I was excited. So I, my first appointment, I told him, I said, um, I need, I need, I need, I want to have a baby, you know, I want to have a baby, but I have fibroids. I don't know what's going on in there. So, and I was reading your paperwork and it says that you guys do myomectomy and stuff like that. So he was like, yeah, sure we do. Anyways, went to get my ultrasound done. He had me do a hysterosalpingogram. He had me do a um, check my um, had me do a, a what is that? A, like a saline sonogram. He had me do all of that. Came back. He said, "I cannot see your ovaries. Your fibroids are blocking." your ovaries I can't even see your eggs I was like wow can you see my eggs I need them eggs because he was saying the first thing he would have to do would be a, a an egg retrieval for the IVF process now that's not story so anyways but that's how it started because I didn't know if I could just go without the intention of getting pregnant so I went with that idea so I could fix my uterus and leave it in place and the only person who will do that is the one who's going to use the uterus after the surgery because that's where he makes his money so he gonna protect my uterus at all costs because he wants that money that's my thought process behind it. So if you got the, all these things going on and you're of childbearing age and they're telling you about uh, chopping out your uterus, go see a fertility specialist who specializes in those things. Anyways, fast forward. I decided I'm going to have this surgery. This was in February decided I wanted to have the surgery and I got set up for the surgery and you will see all the videos after this so let me start talking let me stop rambling go ahead and watch the videos okay and I'll see you in the last one where I'm current all right watch the videos like the videos comment ask me whatever questions you want to ask me I'm here to answer them.